Okay, so sorry for the delay in getting started. Um, these guys got me on a tangent talking about stuff. <laughs> it's okay. It's really easy uh, to get me on a tangent. You guys haven't been with me long enough to know that uh, I love going off on tangents, uh, especially when I used to teach the construction class. The, the class would learn really quickly that I would start telling stories if they started asking questions. So uh, got entertaining. Yeah. So you can get me completely sidetracked. Anyway, uh, so... Today we're going to work on exercise 209, and the purpose today, and actually the next two days in class, uh, both today and on Monday, uh, is to learn how to create objects that you can use as blocks down the road. And uh, there are a bunch of blocks that previous classes have all done on the website, and you can see a bunch of these. If you go to resources, you can go to the Rhino Blocks library, and it will bring up a bunch of things that people have done. So fenestration is windows and doors. Uh, furnishings is, is actual furniture. Uh, building components, cabinets, you know, sometimes it's doors, stairs, that kind of thing. Uh, fixtures, we're not going to deal with lighting just yet, but those are when people build lamps and, and that sort of thing. Um, construction components, again, different ideas. Uh, landscape components are things like glass and, and ocean textures and, and what have you. Uh, the idea behind these is that it's, it's a quick way for you to get things. If you go, for example, to another website like Flying Architecture, uh, which is another great resource for this sort of thing, uh, they also have a bunch, they call them 3D models um, that you can go and pick from. Stop, go away. Um, so, you know, doors and windows here is, is their example of some doors and windows uh, that other people have created. They don't by any means have a, an exhaustive list, but it's another source. Uh, if we go to furniture, I forget where it is, they have a lot of furniture, you know, chairs and, and what have you, um, that you can uh, obviously work from as well. Some are better than others. Um, the idea here is we're doing very much the same thing. Uh, for today's exercise 209, I'm asking that you um, pick something that's a relatively uh, straightforward building component, a cabinet, a door, a window, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, if you can stay away from furniture and that sort of stuff, that's for a later uh, class, which is next class. Um, what I will do is today I'm going to do something relatively simple, uh, like a cabinet or a sink or a, a door or a window or something like that. Um, but next class I'm going to do something that's compl more complicated, like a pillow or a set of draperies or something like that, so you can see fabric and kind of wrinkles and, and that sort of thing. Um, and so I know that you guys are going toward your, um, your uh, ch chair and table uh, for your assignment 201. Uh, I'm guessing that you'll probably want pillows and that sort of thing. So uh, now is the day to be modeling and over the weekend is to be modeling all the structural part of it. And when you get to wanting a, a pillow or, or something like that on it, that will, uh, we'll go through that next Monday and you'll have enough time to deal with that, assign the materials and render for Wednesday. So that's kind of the trajectory of where we're going. Um, so anyway, if you click on, for example, more fenestration blocks here, um, you can see that there's a bunch of doors and windows and things that people have done. Um, one of the things that some people like to do, uh, especially if you're not overly familiar with standards of window openings or door openings or, or, or that sort of thing, is a lot of times people will, will actually go to manufacturer sites and select a... Uh, a building component based on something that somebody makes. So, for example, if I was looking at windows, maybe I'd look at uh, Geldwin as an example. Uh, maker of, of doors and windows. Not necessarily high-end doors and windows, but hey, it's doors and windows. Um, you can actually go in and kind of dial in and say, oh, I like double-hung windows and, and kind of see some pre-existing options for what they kind of look like and even sort by materials and that sort of thing. Um, generally, on these, there is also, and I have to figure out where exactly it is. Let's let me pick this. These websites move stuff around. Um, if I pick a window, something like this, generally there's a, a place where I can get technical documents, and if I'm lucky, they'll have AutoCAD DWG drawings. That's the ideal world, okay? And if that's the case, then generally I can pick uh, something like this: elevations of the sightline EX clad double hung, okay? If I click, right click, and I say save link as, uh, it's a DWG, I'll save it on my flash drive in 136. This would be exercise 209. And I'll go ahead and click save. 
I'm picking, I'm picking this as an example just so you can see this part of the process. If you pick a different object, if you pick a sink, uh, you know, for example, you could model a toilet. I mean, you know, there's varying levels of difficulty. Um, uh, and you can get things, even some 3D objects, I'm not asking you to pick one of the 3D objects because the point would obviously be to make your own 3D object, but there's a lot of information that is there that you can work from. Uh, you know, plumbing fixtures, for example, if you go to Kohler's um, website, they have a bunch of uh, stuff in kitchen and bath that you can look through, uh, you know, toilets and sinks and whatever. Um, and the idea is you're basically, you're modeling an existing thing that is made, not something that you're fabricating, where your table and chair are something that you're coming up with. Anyway, so I downloaded that onto my flash drive. And one of the great things about Rhino is it talks really nicely to AutoCAD, uh, and it will allow us to bring in an AutoCAD file. So I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to go to Insert. And I'm going to look for my flash drive, um, 136, 209, and there it is. There's the AutoCAD file. So I'll go ahead and click Open, uh, and I'll go ahead and say OK, and OK. And it's going to give me the DWDGXF import options. Uh, and so I'm going to basically leave the default options. All of that's fine. My model units are in inches. The layout units are in inches. Um, and we'll go ahead and say OK. Hopefully, when it comes in, and I'll put it at zero, 00, it will be reasonably accurate. Uh, been selected. There they are. Um, to an actual scale. Now, my guess is they're probably too small. So let me go ahead and scale one of these. And you can see that this comes with every window that they make, which is a lot of different ones. I'm going to pick one to model for today. Um, I'm going to model a tall, skinny one. Okay. Now, it gives me a bunch of information here. Uh, and I could probably look up what those are, right? Uh, it's going to tell me what the flat casing, the rough opening, the frame size, and the daylight openings are, okay? Um, we can scale based on either the rough opening or the frame size, depending. Um, probably frame size would be easiest. Daylight opening would probably be pretty easy, too. Uh, so I'm going to read what the daylight opening is here at 31 and a 16th. And I'm going to select all, and I'm going to scale. And I'm going to go daylight opening, which would be from right here to right there, should be 31 and 1 16th inches. I'll hit enter. And that'll make sure that it's scaled correctly um, in space for me. Uh, and now I'm going to work with just this one window right here. And so let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to explode these because they came in all connected together so that I can copy this one window. And we're just going to go to copy. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to move it outside. And then I'm going to get rid of all that as reference. I hope. There we go. So let's go back to this. We'll move it to zero. Comma zero, and now we can start looking at it in the perspective view. Okay, so this gives us way more information than we really care about about this particular window, but I'm going to work with it um, because it'll make my life a little bit easier. So I don't care about these um, numbers, and in order to kind of work through this uh, surface, uh, it's a series of lines right now. First thing I'll do is I'll create an actual surface, and I'm just going to do a rectangular surface. Uh, and I'll go from one corner to the other corner, like that. Could be a little bit larger. And let me switch to shaded mode so we can see that now it's a surface. Okay. Now, I'd like this surface to be divided up based on all of these lines that are already drawn for me. So I'm going to do what's called a split. And I'll go to um, Transform, I think. It might be under Edit. Edit Split. Select Objects to Split going to be the surface itself. I'll hit enter. Then it's going to say select cutting objects. And I'll select my lines and I'll hit enter. Now, once it does that, I have separate surfaces for each of these pieces. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. And what that'll allow me to do is I can select and start to build up this window and and or window frame. So let's start with this frame. It goes around my window. Now actually, let's start with the upper frame. This one, this one, and this one. 
Okay. So right now it's all entirely flat. So if I type extrude, is it? extrude curve surface. Sorry, extrude surface. There, there, there. That one. We're going to give this a thickness. And um, if I was really being accurate, I'd go back and check the Geldwin site for one of the section views so that I get all this information correctly. I'm going to approximate it. Um, it'll work out fine. Uh, we'll say that this is, I don't know, an inch and a half thick. Okay, oops, I should have said solid. Let me right click one more time. Repeat that extrude. And make sure I pick solid. Excellent. And we'll do 1.5 inches. Okay, so I've created the first little bit of that. Okay. Now I'm going to work primarily with the front half, and then I'll work with the back half later on uh, of this window. So a typical wall, right, is going to have some some dimension to it. I find it easiest, even though the window technically um, would have. Uh, kind of a combination of an interior jam that would be made out of sheetrock and this would be glued on the outside if you've done construction work you understand the, the typical vinyl window how it works uh, because this is about you know making something that we can stick into the building relatively easily I'm gonna go ahead and assume that uh, this just has a, a window jam that goes around it that's all part of the window um, and so I'm just gonna extrude this outside uh, from here and here once again, this mouse is really touchy. Um, I'm going to have to switch now. Mice. Because it, it repeats the last command when I try to rotate. Okay. So, let me take this last piece down here. And I'm going to extrude uh, surface. And a typical wall uh, is three and a half inches thick plus the exterior plus the interior. Um, so, right, exactly. Um, but we're going to kind of approximate and go at half of that and w in order not to be quite so technical uh, <laughs> we'll just make some assumptions here uh, about walls so we'll say the wall six inches thick and I'm telling you those of you that have construction backgrounds know that this is completely made up because walls aren't actually six inches thick but we're going to assume that they are for a second okay and we're also going to assume that the window is going to be placed in the center of this opening instead of in on the outside which is a technical window so anyway uh, I'm going to go ahead and say three inches here Right, so we have our window there. Now I'm going to repeat the extrude on the bottom and go uh, negative three inches in this direction so that I end up with an overall kind of frame of this window. I don't really care about this outer size because it's actually the fin that you would nail the window into place with, so we're going to ignore that for right now. Okay, so you can see how I'm kind of building up this window based on these surfaces that I already have. Okay? So next thing I need to do is I need to move this up so that it's in the center of, if I can not right click here, move vertical from here and now it's in the center of that part of the window okay and I need to create a little bit of a bevel that comes down to this glass but before I do that I need to make some thickness to the glass so I'm going to offset surface if I can type offset surface uh, I'm gonna select this surface um, and I'm gonna press the direction is going to be both sides and my distance is going to be um, I don't know we'll do 0.25 so that they're a half inch apart let's see if it did it for me okay so there's there's my window uh, on both sides okay my window glass Oops. And I need the little bit of a bevel that goes from the frame down to the glass. So we'll do a surface from three or four corner points. Maybe, if it will not right click on me. So we create that. Keep the process here. Create that and work my way around this particular window. Oh, 
Okay, so I have that little frame that goes around the window. Now I'm going to repeat this process on the underside, underneath here. All right, we have that, that same little window. Now there's a few extra little pieces that I can start to get rid of, like these can go away. And this can go away. And that can go away. And now we can build out that other little bevel. There. Now, since I already did it up above, I can just mirror it. So you're starting to see how I can uh, leverage this a little bit. So let me go to mirror. Now, I'm doing this mirror, and I want to select something that's hidden here. So I'm going to use a slightly different mode, which is called ghosted, which will let me see through a little bit to the center. I think it'll let me mirror now, where I can kind of look through. Uh, and then I can fold the mirror. I probably will need to do it in the front view. So like that. And so now I have the, the upper side and the lower side of this particular piece. Okay, now I also need the lower half of this window to be extruded. Right. So we'll do the opposite for this side. And for some people, it may be useful to go ahead and rotate this in 3D up because you can work on both sides easier. I don't really mind working on it upside down. It, my brain is used to seeing things upside down in 3D modeling. So it depends a little bit on how you go about modeling things. Um, so what I'm going to do for the lower side is I'll pick this, this, oops, wrong key. Oh, come on. did one and a half inches that side, we're going to do negative one and a half inches, negative 1.5 inches. There it is. Now, I don't need these surfaces anymore, so I'll go ahead and delete those. And my glass surface here, uh, I have to move it down, so we'll look at it from underneath, and we'll move vertical, and I'm going to snap from there to the center, and then I'm going to offset surface. And we're going to do both sides. Yes, my distance is correct. We'll go ahead and hit enter. It builds out that little pane of glass for me. Okay. Now, in the middle of this pane of glass, there may be another surface. So we're going to do some cleaning up down the road. Uh, and I also need to do those um, little uh, bevels. Okay, that can go away. Can go away. This right click thing is killing me. There we go. Alright. Um, and so maybe I'll do this slightly differently. And the reason I'm going to show you this slightly differently is maybe you don't want just a flat bevel. Maybe you want it to have a slight arc to it. Okay. Well, we can we can create that just as easily. Okay, so let's say uh, I want to have a, a half circle um, rounded molding instead of a, a bevel. Um, so what I need to do is I need first to um, work through creating the shape that I want. Uh, and this is a little bit challenging because it's at 45 degrees, but I'm going to build a couple things to help myself out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that goes down Right, and meets this point there. And I may need to work in multiple views at once. So I'm going to use that as a guide. Smart track is now on. And let me make sure perpendicular is on. And there it is, perpendicular. It should have given me a line straight down such that I can draw this across to there. Okay, so I'm just giving myself a little bit of construction help there. Uh, let me do an arc, and I'm going to do the center of the arc being here, one end and the other end, and I may have to flip up into a vertical direction. Of course, 
being completely annoying. Bear with me for a second. The reason this is being tricky is because um, I don't have my seaplane. I can do it this way, which might be the easiest way, and then rotate it. Uh, I don't have my seaplane set for that corner, um, which I can show you, but I don't want to confuse you quite yet. We haven't dealt with seaplanes yet. All right, so we're there. Didn't quite, not quite as large as I wanted it to be. Um, let me scale one D. Oh, come on, quadrant. So there. Okay, so I have this piece. Uh, we need to do a quick trim of that, so we can select this and that. And we'll trim and get rid of the rest of that circle. Oh, really? Bear with me. Trim. Oh, you're being so annoying. Okay, I gotta I gotta recreate this because this is this geometry is killing me. Okay. Let's try this again. You know what? It would help if I just measured it. All right. So let me measure what it is from here to here. Okay, 0 0.608. And we measure the height here. 0.5. Okay, good. So we got 0 0.608 and 0.5. Let me quickly create a arc for myself. And I'm just going to do it over here. All right, first dimension is going to be um, 0.5 inches. Next one is going to be 0 0.608 inches. Really? Scale 1D 0.608 inches there. Okay, so now I have the arc. I can copy this back up to here. Sorry for this long winded explanation. Zoom selected. Okay, now we're going to rotate this in 3D. Rotate 3D. axis of rotation is going to be right along there. And we're going to go from being flat there, being down there, and then we're going to rotate one more time, and this is actually at negative 45 to get it to line up right there. That's what I was trying to create, and I apologize for that being ridiculously too long. Okay, But I can use the edge of this surface here, which I already have a curve, which is convenient. Actually, I don't have a curve. Uh, let me duplicate the edge of this curve there. And since I'm already doing it, I'm going to go ahead and do all of the curves at once. So we'll do that, and that, and that. And I'll join those because I right clicked this one. And I now have all of those. Okay, let me join them together. And it's one closed curve. I can do my sweep one with my rail being that curve and my cross section being this curve. I can say OK. And I now have an arcing. Sorry for that to create the profile, but I now have the arc 
uh, there rather than just the bevel. Okay? Uh, and so because I have that arc already set, we can mirror that from one side to the other. And you can see, um, if I'm looking in the front view, one has the two bevels and this one has the arcs. Okay, just a matter of preference, but I'm trying to show you how that stuff would work. Okay, so I've worked this out. I now have the inside and the outside of these two windows put together. Uh, I'm gonna do some touch-up cleanup. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rotate 3D. And I'm gonna go from zero, zero that way and this way, and I'm going to fold it up into space like that, so I can start to see this. Uh, and I'm going to clean up some of the stuff that I don't really need. I'll clean up that, which is just the frame that goes around the outside. We'll clean up that, clean up this, and you can see that we're starting to get to where we have a pretty good looking window. From here, it's a matter of really organizing uh, my layers. When you bring in an AutoCAD drawing, you're going to bring in a bunch of AutoCAD layers. So depth points and zero, those are all AutoCAD layers. Uh, but I want to start organizing my window. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, and we're going to call this layer window, maybe. Call this window. All right. I'm going to create a new sublayer, and we're going to call this glass. And create another new sublayer, and we'll call this frame. And I'll create another new uh, sublayer. Oops. I want a new sublayer, and we'll call this trim, maybe. This one can go away. And now I'm going to start to pay attention to this. Now, if I have this called window, and then glass, frame, and trim. Uh, if I have more than one window coming in, I may end up with a bunch of objects that are on the window layer, right? So if I want to be able to tease this out completely, uh, I can call this uh, window, uh, and we'll give it some extra descriptor. It's a tall skinny, right? And then I can say this is ts-glass, ts-frame, and ts-trim. The only reason I did something like that is just to make it its own unique thing when I bring it in as a block. It's, not, it's optional, you don't have to do it, but it is there. Okay, so now let's go through and start to select things. So we know that we've got the two pieces of glass and they belong on the glass layer. So let me right click and say change object layer and those will be on the glass layer. One of the things that I do as kind of a trick is a lot of times I'll turn off the layer to make sure that it was selected correctly. Okay, uh, And so we'll say that this these are all going to be the trim. So we'll go through and do some selections here. Sorry. Um, I'm going to do one more. This is, I'm going to create one more sub layer and we'll call this jam, just in case I wanted to. Yes. Okay, just so I can separate it out in case I want to do some different material. So we'll go ahead and start selecting things. And we'll start changing layers. Change object layer, perfect. Uh, and a lot of times I'll make the window layer active so that I can turn, start to turn these things off. And so we'll take these two and we'll put it on jam, change object layer. All right, and then we'll start looking at, okay, we've got these. This is the frame of the window. change to frame, change object layer, we can turn that off as well. Um, these here are also frames. And you can see that as I'm starting to, to do this, uh, it starts to be pretty easy to uh, discern what are extra objects that I really don't need. This, 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 
in the object layer. Right, we're getting there. Perfect. Uh, and so the rest of this is kind of all superfluous extra information. Um, you can choose to put this on a layer um, somewhere else. So I can, for example, change this object and we'll call this extra or construction or whatever. Then I'm going to go through and get rid of the rest of these layers. So I'll go to delete layers. And so this sometimes happens. And I wanted to do it this way so that I could have this pop up. Uh, block definitions on a layer, it won't let you delete it. And this happens in AutoCAD when you bring AutoCAD stuff in, if there's any blocks in AutoCAD. If this happens to you, you have to go to the block manager, and you can see that there's some stuff that came in as, as, as AutoCAD block management stuff. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and just delete those because none of them matter. Right? And we'll go ahead and click close. Now we'll be able to delete these layers. So we'll say yes to all, those are gone. Uh, default layer, we'll delete that as well. Okay, and so I have an extra layer, and then I have, uh, did I accidentally? Mm -hmm. Thank you, I selected too many layers. Okay, so I now am back to where I have just my window, but I do have this extra layer. So if I'm still in the construction phase, maybe I keep the extra layer. Ultimately, I'm going to delete it because I don't want it to be confusing. So let me go ahead and delete this. I'll say yes. Okay. And so this is a, a relatively basic window. I may want to add a little bit more to it. I said um, trim. Maybe I'll put interior and exterior trim on this so that we could use that as well. But for now, you don't have to sit and watch me do the trim. Um, but I do want to assign materials. And so I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that before I move forward. Uh, so I'll open up V-Ray. And of course, my V-Ray toolbar disappeared. Let's see if I can bring it back. Yeah, why would these computers stay consistent day to day, right? Uh, I can get to it without the V-Ray toolbar from right here under Material Editor. Uh, and from here, I can actually load the uh, scene materials. So let me click on Load Material. And <laughs> lo and behold, I don't have the Q drive. So we, we get to do that again, too. Uh, so let me go to Start, uh, Computer, Map Network Drive. Maybe someday we'll be able to stop doing this. Hurry up and wait. There we go. And we'll look for the ET116 license server. Good news is by now you probably all. Oh, how nice. This is what you guys had yesterday. Mm -hmm. didn't you? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and make sure that the license server is actually on, assuming Chuck's here, uh, and see if that's maybe the cause of this problem. Anyway, for the time being, um, why don't we stop? Um, having me talk and do the assigning the materials until I get that problem resolved. Okay, so make sure you do save the 3DM file. So I'll go to File Save. We're going to save this on my flash drive in 136 and 209, and we'll call this Tall Tall Window. And I'll go ahead and click Save um, so that I can come back to it. Okay, so we're gonna I'm going to stop here. I'm going to go see if I can fix the materials, then we'll come back and talk about it. Go ahead and start modeling your building component, though. So we don't need to pull something in. To open up the V-Ray um, material editor, um, because my toolbars disappeared, again, go figure uh, <laughs> with these computers right now, uh, I'm just going to the V-Ray menu and clicking on material editor, and I'm going to bring in a glass material. And uh, I'll go to load material, uh, I already have the digital tools Q drive mapped. If not, I could go back and map it. I'll go to resources, V-Ray materials, and I'll go to glass. And I'm going to pick the go ahead and pick the basic glass. Um, the reason I'm picking the basic glass is because this is not meant to look fantastic right now. But when you put it in with a scene with a sky and all that, we want actual glass to look correct. So I'm going to go ahead and pick basic glass. I'll double click and I'll open up my basic glass, which is there. Uh, we can see that, yes, it's turning out correct. 
Now I'm going to apply this to a layer. So I'm going to right click and say apply material to selection or to layer. And I'll pick glass as my layer. And I can see that basic glass is now applied. Since I'm here, I'll go ahead and load in a couple other materials. Uh, let me go ahead and load in some wood. So let's come down to wood here. And I don't know, we'll do a walnut. There'll be dark windows. Sure, why not? Right? And so if we look at that, we can preview it. Looks pretty good. Let me right click and say apply material uh, to layer. And I'm going to apply it both to the frame of the window uh, and I'll apply to layer and we'll do to the jam of the window for now. Okay. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close this out and I'm going to switch my view into rendered mode so that I can kind of take a look at how it looks. Okay. And it's not bad, but I'd like my materials to, to match up. Uh, and so there, therein lies the texture mapping strategies. So I'm going to turn off the glass so that I have just my um, uh, wood showing. Uh, and I'm also going to turn off the frame or the, the um, jam so that I have just the window showing. And we'll go with that. Uh, and I'm going to do each window as a separate object because I don't want the texture to, to flow between the two windows. I want it to be separate for each window. So now I can select this upper window. And let me hold down shift select that way, make sure I have everything, there it is. Uh, with that selected, right, I'm going to go to my properties and I'm going to go to my texture mapping and I'm going to apply a box mapping. So again, it's a simple shape, so box mapping is appropriate. We're going to pick bounding box, world, uh, and I do want it capped, and yes. And so now we can take a look at my window and lo and behold, all of the, the grain fits quite nicely and it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy. Okay. Now we'll jump back to the lower window here, and we'll select everything in the lower window. Let me make sure I get everything. Okay, it looks like I have it. Uh, and once again, I'm going to apply a box mapping to this window. And so we'll do bounding box, and we'll do world, and cap yes. And so now that has its own set of materials and it all flows nicely across all of those uh, surfaces. Okay, so that's all established for me. If I were to turn back on right, the jams and let's turn off the frames, I'm down to having my jams and I'd like those to also be um, seamless. So I'll select those, once again go to properties, materials, and I'll do a box mapping on those. And we'll do a bounding box, world, and I'll do it capped and now I have those nicely applied uh, as well. Now, in this instance, I don't, I'm not really happy with what the texture looks like along the sides. Um, I like to change that. I'm reasonably happy with what it looks like here. Uh, so, I'm going to select these objects again, and we're going to come over here, and I'm going to use the X equals Y equals Z option right, to equalize these. And let's see what they look like. No. no. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. I'm reasonably happy with it. The face looks pretty good. That looks pretty good as if it were an actual board. That looks pretty good as well. Now, in reality, I probably should do these two as separate because right now the grain is going the wrong direction. So maybe I'll go back to my um, properties and let me take these two pieces there and there and let me get rid of the texture mapping and I'm going to apply a new box mapping, bounding box and world cap yes and let's take a look at it I did it as a separate piece it looks the same right now but if I select these objects like that I can show my mapping there's my bounding box and I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees so I'll turn on that gumball that we were talking about and I'm gonna rotate it that way and now I'm gonna end up with my wood texture going the opposite direction Okay, uh, and so it's not bad. You know what? I think I might rotate it once more. That direction. I think I have four of these. I shouldn't have this. One. 
Uh, I had four because, let me back up, it was showing me all four at once. Let me go back to those. I'm going to show the mapping, uh, making sure that they're all selected, which they should be. We're going to adjust it that way um, and take a look. Okay, that's going the direction I want it to. That's pretty good. I am going to do this x equals y equals z so that I can see the board. There we go. And so now the grain's going in the correct direction for the top and the bottom of the window. So I'm pretty happy with how it, the way it's looking right now. Uh, it looks pretty good. Notice my overall mapping uh, shows differently because I changed the x equals y equals z. Um, and so let me also hide the mapping and now I'm back to this. So I can go back to my layers, turn on my glass, turn on my frames. Um, I didn't have trim, but I have a pretty good representation of this particular object. So I'm going to add an infinite plane underneath it. Uh, and of course my uh, toolbar is gone, so I'm just going to type infinite plane. It's viz infinite plane because it's a V-ray. Sorry. There it is. Let me rotate down a little bit so that I'm on my object. Uh, let me select get a couple of these just so I can zoom. Selected. There we go. Establish a nice view. The reason I'm looking down is because I want I don't want the background and I don't want to deal with it. Uh, and now I can go ahead and render. And I'll have a nice preview of my object. It's by no means perfect because I don't have any reflection of the glass, but it's, it's a reasonable representation of what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as an example. And so let me go to my flash drive, 136, and I'm going to save under 209. We're going to call this tall window uh, sample or something like that. I'll click save, and I'll go ahead and close this. Okay, so I have this established. I'm going to go ahead and save this again as its 3DM file. Um, one of the things that's, that's really important if you plan on using this where you don't have access to the network's renderer is to make sure that you save all of the materials with this block. So let's say somebody else were to borrow it and they didn't have the materials. Uh, they can reload them if you include them with your block. So I'm going to go to um, the V-Ray menu, go to the materials editor, and for each material that I use, I'm going to right click on it and say pack material. And I'm going to drop that in the same location as my exercise. It makes a zip file. And so I'll pack this material as well. Hit save. All right. So now I can go to my folder here on my flash drive. And I can see that I have the sample the 3DM file and I have the two materials. Those are the parts that I care about. I'm going to hold down control and select the two materials, the sample and the um, 3DM file. And I'm going to right click and say send to compressed or zipped folder. And this is going to collect them all into one place and I'll be able to call it tallwindow.zip. Perfect. That's what I want to upload. Um, so We'll jump over to the website, and I'll show you actually uploading this stuff. Uh, give me a second to get to the top and log in. Okay. And I'm going to go to New and then Post. And we'll call this tall window. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and add media, and I'm going to upload that zip file. So I'm going to select files, tallwindow.zip, and we'll go ahead and upload that. Once it's uploaded, I'm going to say insert into post, and it's going to give me a little link to be able to download it. Okay, uh, which is good. I'm also going to come down here to the bottom and set the featured image as that preview render that I did, this tall window sample. So I'll go ahead and do that. There it is, and I'll go ahead and set featured image. There's the window. 
Now, in order to categorize it nicely, I'm going to look on the right hand side here. Of course, this is Digital Tools 2, so I should make sure this is Exercise 209. Perfect. But I'm going to continue scrolling down here, and you'll see a, a box for rhinoceros blocks. Okay? And this gives you a bunch of examples uh, of how we can categorize this. And so I'm going to look for fenestration. And I'll keep going down here. It's a window. It's a double hung. All right. It's a lot like a single hung, so I'll check that as well. Uh, if there's anything else that I want to do, I can come down here. Materials. It's made of glass and it's made of wood. This just helps categorize. So if somebody's actually looking um, for something specific, um, they can find it that way. Uh, and so all of the rest of that sounds pretty good. Um, and once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and click publish. And then I can view my post. And we'll see that I get a preview and also a link to download it. Okay. I could be a little bit more wordy if I wanted to in that I could say um, You know, downloads, click, right click on the link below to save. I don't know, whatever. Right? I could even put it as a bullet point. Whatever. Okay, go ahead and update. Uh, and then this will constitute the post for today. So make sure it is categorized as exercise 209, but then also add the other tags so that we know and it fits into the system of the rest of the blocks. Okay? Um, so that's, the, that's working all the way through um, this particular exercise. Remember, next class we're going to do like fluffy objects, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So concentrate today on non-fluffy objects, um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay?